Over the past year or so, I've been getting into making tiny custom versions of some of my droids and also some other custom action figures. And it's a subject I've wanted to share with you guys for a little bit. So today, we're going to explore custom 3.75 inch Star Wars action figures. Hey everybody, welcome to the Dano channel. I am Dano, your host, and I've got Sad, and I've got Brad. There's even a galactic snack and Grogu back there. But today, we are talking about custom 3.75 inch action figures, specifically Star Wars ones. Now, I did mention I've got Sad, I've got Brad, and earlier this year I filmed those Dano channel adventures, little short skits that I filmed in my backyard, and little adventures using toys, using me and my pilot outfit, etc., and I posted on Instagram a little while back that I'd made a Doc Ondar, a custom Doc Ondar. Now, one of the Sad Baby Squad leaders here, very, very supportive member of my community, someone who I think is a really just overall cool dude, um, Nate O'Shea, sent me this a few weeks back. Take a look at that. That is a, that is a custom Doc Ondar figure using an old hammerhead, this is a custom card, so well done. Honestly, I was so impressed when I saw this that I hit him up and I said, Nate, I, I, I need to know, I need to pick your brain about how you put this together and just what your process was. Because I think you at home, the community, would really, would really want to know and I think you guys could benefit from this. So... We filmed a little 12-minute conversation where we talked about all the details on how he put this together. Take a look. All right, well, here he is. This is Nate O'Shea, the person who sent me this awesome custom Doc Ondar. And, Nate, I wanted to talk to you and just kind of chat and get, get into your head a little bit about how you put this all together. Like, what... When did when did you start thinking about it? What uh, what made you want to do it? And kind of just give me the story. It started with seeing all the other figures that they have out there that they've been trying to do with the vintage series, and then some of the black series figures. Um, but they've been rehashing some of the same old characters, maybe with a new color type on the armor um, or a new packaging. Um, and we haven't seen a lot of new new characters. Uh, that have been in the universe, whether it's been in books or in the comics um, or even in Galaxy's Edge. And then I was at my local comic book store um, and noticed all of the action figures, the 3.75s that they had, and I realized I still have a bunch at home. Maybe there's something I can do. And sure enough, I had a little Doc Ondar, a little hammerhead. That's awesome. And I thought, you know what? There hasn't been a Doc Ondar character yet. And I know that you did your Mubo character. And like, well, why don't I take a step at that? And so that's what I wanted to do. I started with the character. And then I did a bunch of Google searching to see pictures of how his outfit looks. And so from there, I ended up doing the, the front that, and the back of the card. That's so cool. So you did that in just like Photoshop or? Photoshop. Photoshop. That is cool. There are a bunch of uh, images on Google that you can just do and search and download. And um, that's, found a couple that's, of YouTube tutorials. The card is like the one thing I hadn't considered going that far with it. So when I opened the package and saw that you went all out and you got all the details and everything, that's what I was like, oh, wow. This is a full package. You you put some love, like a, like a lot of love into it. It wasn't just the figure. You went for the whole presentation. And I think that's so cool. Just the back, like all the photos you put on there. So my question is the card back and printing. Did you just get that printed at a local shop or was that like a... Um, I bought the photo paper um, mm -hmm. from Amazon. Um, okay. You kind of have to go 11 by 17. I had a lessons learned where I found 11 by 14. I don't need that size of 11 by 17. But a lot of printers don't want to do photos photo paper in 11 by 14. So 11 by 17 was the trick there. Gotcha. Um, and then with the card back, I just used some of the comic book card backs. Oh, 
that's to get that it. rigidity since I'm also a comic book collector. Yeah. That see this is these little things like that, these like little resourceful using what's around you. That's it. That's like that's how we yeah. do this kind of stuff. Is we're like, well, what do I have? What can I work with? I would have never thought but to I, use that, but it's perfect. Yeah. So I just bought the photo paper, printed it at home on my my printer, and then I just folded it, put it over the top, what? and then I just used my handy craft cutter to trim the edges. That is great. I love that. But then. The piece de resistance was the little Hobby Lobby punch down block to get to get your corners, rounded edges to get the rounded corners. That's smart. That's so smart. That's cool. Yeah. That's awesome. And the, but then to get it to stick to the cardboard, I didn't want to just use a glue stick or just mm -hmm. regular school glue to, to avoid bubbling. So I just used a basic can spray of spray adhesive. glue. Okay, that is so cool. Like. And, and you know what's like fun about this? It's not a lot of work. It's not like super crazy hard to do, but you end up with like a really cool result afterwards. Mm -hmm. So that's that's why I wanted to bring you on because I wanted to like explain to the audience and to the community, sad baby squad here, that like any of us can do this kind of thing. You just got it. You got to think. You got to think about what's around you. Get resourceful. Get creative. And like you. Nate, you've been the spark for me. I'm going to try this. I'm going to try doing this myself soon and make my own. Now that I kind of have a, you know, a guide as to how to do that. That's so cool, man. I really appreciate so, all the love and work you put into welcome. this. I thought you would like that with, with all of the little shorts you do with, with Brad and Sad and, and, and the rest of the Yeah, so yeah, and that's that's like one of the things, because I've got my, my little Doc Ondar figure that I made. Yeah. And what's cool is, like, for people watching at home, you can find a lot of these figures, especially some of these older ones, cheap. Sometimes they're on eBay loose yeah. for cheap. Or if you go to, like, a local toy store in your area, you can just go on your phone and type in toy store. Most towns do have some kind of mom-and-pop-owned local toy store. And a lot of times there are loose or cheap older Star Wars figures. I think this hammerhead was, like, 5 bucks. It's from the 90s. Yeah. And, you know, I was like, oh, cool. I'll get an extra one of those, and we'll just kind of chop them up and see what I can do. So these projects can be done on the cheap and you end up with a really cool, unique toy that no one else has. I had found Obi-Wan, hello there, at <laughs> a flea market. So one of the other lessons learned was he, as the, the nice thing had, he had the soft goods. He had ah, a little robe that yeah. came with him. So I thought for five bucks, there's a robe that I could use for Doc Ondar. But Doc Ondar has got a lighter color it's robe. much lighter color, yeah. And a lesson learned I found is that not all fabrics are bleachable. So I sat there learning to try to bleach this, because this is what I was originally going to use. It cleaned it up really well, but it did not get anywhere near the, the color. color Doc Otter. So that oh, was a that's lesson funny. learned. So mine, so then, I, ended up, I ended up hand sewing mine, which was a pain. I mean, there's yeah. not really like a pattern or anything. I just had to guess. What is that? Oh, it was a little mini sewer? This is a, a little handheld sewer. You know what's funny? A little funny? handheld sewing machine. I had done that video where I showed my garage and like what a hoarder I am. I have one of those and I've never used it, but I bought it like nine years ago and I know it's in a box right behind me, <laughs> but I've never yeah. used it or learned how to use it. But again, thank you for the reminder. I need to probably yeah. use that. That would save me so much trouble on this stuff. And then because I didn't have the fabric I needed, I went to Hobby Lobby and Michaels and Joanne Fabrics and looked at their, um, the, re the, uh, like the little quarters or whatever, like the, the loose Well, scrap the, I looked for the quarters. I also looked for the um, pre-cuts, the excess uh -huh. that people didn't want. Yeah, the remnants and, and all that kind of... The remnants, that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. I looked for the remnants, and I found remnants, and so that way I had enough of different material to try different options. And that's what I... Was, yeah, I bought a couple quarters from uh, Joanne Fabric myself, and I was like, well, I can yeah. make something out of these. And it was only inside like out. two or three bucks, maybe, or if that, it was like a dollar ninety four. Yeah, exactly. And you end up with a ton of fabric. So another cheap right. way for everyone at home watching to like, you can play around. And if you mess remnants. up, you've got extra, go through the remnants. You usually can find something close enough. And it's kind of just use your imagination and get creative. And you can come up with some cool stuff. For the uh, the bubble cover, since it is something that you would want to keep. Yeah. I had found on Amazon that they have different size bubble covers that are supposed to be reusable. Okay. And so then I thought 
you could glue that to the back of the card and then still open the bubble cover to play with your character to do your fun micro mini pictures yeah. and then put it back in the card back. And so that I did pull it up before just a little bit. Oh, that's that's it. it okay, very smart. It folds right open and oh, it's still it's official. That's it's right. official. Okay. Very Okay. That's right. It's... <laughs> you got me. It's official. I dropped it. That's hilarious. Oh, dude, that's so cool. And so this hammerhead figure, this is the this is a vintage one, right? This is an actual That is vintage a vintage. One? That's an actual vintage hammerhead. Of course, you got the little chains on there too. I went with a, yep. a much more pain in the butt route. I bought a small little like necklace from the beads section hmm. at Michael's, and I cut it. Of course, beads went everywhere instantly and are still around my room. And they're tiny little things. And then I had to like restring them, retie it up, and then put that on there. What was your uh, route here? Where did you get this tiny little so, chain? So, same idea, Michael's with their okay. jewelry section. And just found a, a small chain of the color that I wanted. Uh, used my tools, my uh, snips, and my little needle nose pliers. Gotcha. And used little O-rings to kind of twist them back together. Ah. And right. then as an added bonus so he doesn't fall off, I just use a little sewing needle to sew it to the back of his neck. Very the smart. Back of the cloth so it stays in place. Very smart. So a lesson That's... learned that I had with the bubble cover was that um, I have done... BD1 back here, whatever. Uh, and if you use super glue, it tends to fog up because of the adhesive and the vapors. Ah. So at first I had tried silicone, which gave a nice clear finish as a final product, but it didn't want to really stick. Mm. So I ended up using, I did end up using super glue, but I was very careful on the edges so that the back of it wouldn't fog up at all. So good to know. Like you really did, just had some trial and error with this. <laughs> yes, definitely some trial and error, but it's all in the fun of making it. Right. You know, just enjoy the craft. It, so was this your first time doing this? That is my first one. That's an amazing first attempt. That is Thank a really you. amazing. It's so one of the things that when you when you sent me the note with it about the uh, the card number, it's these little details like this that. That's what takes stuff like up, you know, it, that's over the top. Like, that's so awesome. So the card number is that uh, you guys, I don't know if you'll be able to see it there. If it will ever focus, it won't focus. I just realized my camera got on auto. Five, three, one, one, nine. Five, three, one, one, nine. And it, it, I didn't get it. I was, I sat there. I was like five plus three plus, yeah, you know, I was like sitting there doing math yeah, and, and I was like, okay, you got to tell me what it is. The opening date of Galaxy's Edge. For, for California, Disneyland. for Disneyland, yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's like the first Galaxy's Edge, so good, good choice on that number. But it's little, little details and stuff like that. That that's that's what makes this art. You know, like when I, I started my channel doing painting, and one of the things I learned is the difference between something that just looks okay and something that looks really, really good is the addition of these tiny details with care, and. That little number is one of those. Like, that's a perfect example of these extra little details. The Kenner logo, you know, the the little zero to three sad babies on the back, like sad that kind of stuff. Baby approved. It's that sad stuff baby is approved. that's amazing, dude. I really, really do appreciate all the work that went into this. This is so cool. Well, I'm glad you enjoy it. Cool. Well, Nate, thank you so much for hanging out and talking for a little bit and sharing what you learned and your process with the whole community. Guys at home, I hope all of you who watched this really like take away something and give it a try and then share, like make something and share pictures with me. Cause I want to, I want to see it. I want the community to see it, what you guys are capable of because Nate's already given us a great example of what any of us can do. So thanks so much for coming on Nate. You're welcome, Dano. Thank you for having me. <laughs> okay, again, big thanks to Nato Schaefer, for not only sending this, but for taking the time to share all of his tips and process with us. I hope you all have been inspired to make your own custom figures. And let me know. Tag me on Instagram, at Dano Flores. Tag me on Instagram. Send the photos to me or on Facebook or wherever. Email them to me. That's fine. All the info is always down in the description below. But I want to know what you guys are capable of, because I know this community is capable of great and amazing things so thank you so much if you're not part of the community this is your first time seeing one of my videos make sure you're subscribed make sure you've got all the notifications turned on and you're generally a positive person in my community then you're part of the sad baby squad i love having you here guys thank you so much for watching until next time don't be a moof milker pee the spark